And then you have the Velcro. Pull that open. <laughs> My lovely assistant. And that's how it looks. Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to be making cage liners for the ferret and critter nation cages with u-haul padding on the inside as an absorbent layer. So I have done some of these in the past but more as pads and I haven't shown the entire process on how I do that. So today I'm going to show you guys from start to finish how I make the absorbent cage liners for my Etsy shop. Um, basically, it's really important that you pre-wash the padding because it will shrink. So once you sew it in, if you don't pre-wash it, what will happen is um, after everything is sewn together and it shrinks, it's going to cause your liners to bunch and act really funky. So I'm going to show you guys today um, how I pre-wash and sew the absorbent layer cage liners for the Critter Ferret Nation cage. So the U-Haul padding comes from U-Haul. It is a furniture pad, that's what I use. Um, and I get them basically from the U-Haul store. And I am going to, I got a couple of them just because they're good to have on hand. And so here's what they look like. Uh, the packy peanuts are for my ferrets to play in, but I'll get to that in another video. So let's take these inside and wash them. So I'm gonna throw these in the wash. I'm gonna wash them on a high heat and I'm gonna dry them on a high, and with hot water, I'm gonna dry them on a high heat. I really am trying to shrink these, so I want them to shrink as much as they're gonna shrink. I don't want the buyer to get them home and then wash them and have them shrink. I wanna do that ahead of time. I do not pre-wash my fleece. Some sellers do pre-wash their fleece. I personally, this is not something that I wanna do. If you want to wash your fleece, I feel like that's something that buyers wanna do on their own. Um, it does help it to wick faster, but the fleece really doesn't shrink. Fleece doesn't shrink nearly. If it shrinks at all, it's very minimal. It's probably not even noticeable. But this padding is like kind of like cotton and it will shrink. Um, and that is a problem. So I need to get this pre-shrunk before I even start to sew it. And that's why I'm choosing to wash the padding. Um, but the fleece, like I said, I'm not going to pre-wash. When you wash anything for your pets, and this just is a personal, this isn't a personal preference. This is a highly, highly... This is a big recommendation. Please use unscented detergent, perfume-free, dye-free. It is really important to your pet's skin. It can harm them to put any kind of dyes or anything like that on your pets, um, just to wash any of their bedding in that. So I will show you what I use. So for my pets, I wash in this Tide that is fragrance free. Um, there's lots of other things you can use that are similar. You can also use Drift, the baby detergent, um, so something like that, just so that it, it keeps from irritating your pet's skin after it's done. All right, you guys, please disregard my old dryer. It came with my house and my washer, it works. So why replace something that's not broken, right? That's my theory, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. We're gonna move this over to warm, or we'll do hot, that's hot, cold. All right. And we're going to do a pre-wash is what we're doing. Okay, so this is the U-Haul padding after I washed it. It definitely shrunk and it definitely shed it, but it's nice and washed now. So I've cut two pieces um, for the big pans. Some people double this. I am not going to double this. Um, that's not what the buyer wanted so i made my pieces approximately about 40 inches long give or take um they're gonna get cut down some so this is my u-haul patty washed and dried on high heat next you're gonna want to get your fleeces so i have my solid color this is gonna be my back now these are facing these are actually just the way it comes on the bolt so when you get your fleece from the store it should be like this your two salvage edges the bad the edges should be together and it's cut just like this so here's what I do um, so that I can get my fleece the way I want this is the right side of the fabric flip one side down I'm gonna grab these two together I'm gonna lift up so now I have the right sides of my fabric facing each other. And this will be one 
This will be one big pan, and the other side of this will be the second big pan. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my padding. This is gonna be the top of my liner, so my cutout will be up here. I'm gonna lay this at the top. I don't want this at the bottom because we're gonna use the bottom to put the Velcro. So we're gonna bring this all the way up to the top. You can either get your pan or your template. Now, just before we start, know this. When you're doing your cutout, if you want this pattern fabric to be facing up, then you need to have your cutout mirrored. So you need to have your, if your pan sits like this in your, if your pan sits this way in your cage, then you need to reverse the direction of your pan when you cut it out. If not, your liner will come out upside down. So we have this in reverse. This is the template I use for all of my, my patterns. So I'm gonna put my template where it normally goes. And I am literally going to trace. And then you're gonna to wanna to bring it down until you meet the bottom. And you wanna keep this lined up. All right, now we're going to cut it out. First, I'm gonna start by cutting this so that I can stick my other piece aside until I'm finished so it doesn't fall off the table. Now I am going to trim down the padding. I don't need the padding to go past the, um, I just need the padding to be as long as the tray itself and that's all, my template's a little bit longer than the tray. So I'm just gonna cut the padding off a little bit because we don't need this much extra bulky padding at the end. We want this extra fabric to create a closure but we don't need it for the padding. For me, I make my pan liners about three inches longer than the actual, four inches longer than the actual pan. So now what I want to do is I want to take the edge of my fabric and I want to roll it about two inches, to be honest with you, about an inch and a half. We're going to put Velcro on here and we want to make a nice pretty lip. We want to match this edge to this edge, just like this. You can see that this is straight. Okay, so I did wanna show you guys a little trick with the Velcro. So we're gonna make, I'm gonna do three strips, pieces of Velcro. So what I'm gonna do is I just measure out what I want. Right, and what you can do is when you're stitching across this your your seam, you can actually just go ahead and put in your velcro. So what I do is I put my velcro where I want it on this side. Now make sure that the velcro is facing out. So you want the velcro on the wrong side of the fabric because you want it to close that way. So don't put it on the inside. Put it on the outside, and put so put your one piece here, and then make sure that you match it exactly up on the other side so that they line up. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to put my presser foot edge against here and I'm gonna stitch right along this edge and I'm gonna stitch right along this edge. So I wanna stitch this seam. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stitch here, all the way across the bottom and then all the way across this bottom. Okay, so this has the double lines. We stitched this twice and did the same thing on this side and then you have Velcro. Pull that open. <laughs> My lovely assistant. And that's how it looks. Okay. All right. Just to show you guys, I got my pan out of my cage. Um, we're going to put the liner on it. I want to just give you guys an idea. So we slide it in. All right. Perfect fit. See? Now what we have left is we have this spot right here. This is all extra. When this person takes it, they can Velcro it, tuck it under, and then their babies cannot get on it. And 
the padding goes all the way across the entire length and not just in the center. Get your second piece that you set aside and we're gonna make the bottom pan, the bottom large pan. We're gonna do it the same exact way. Um, so I'm probably gonna fast forward this just because you don't need me to do this for, you know, twice or whatever. Okay, so we've done the same thing with the two small pans and we're basically gonna do the same thing with the large pan and with these. Okay, so this has the double lines. We stitched this twice and did the same thing on this side. And then you have the Velcro. Pull that open. <laughs> My lovely assistant. And that's how it looks. Okay, you guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to click the like button. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that you never miss a new upload. I will be doing more videos now. Um, my goal is to do at least two a week, uh, potentially do a vlog. I'm not 100% sure. I'm gonna actually be doing a video explaining why I can do more videos now than I could before. So I have a lot of big things happening. Um, they're still in the process. I know I keep saying that, things are moving and it's exciting and I'm working on it. So anyway, have a good week, you guys. I'll see you next time.